Hello, Eva, and welcome back. Hi, Alina. Great to see you in this year. <laughs> yeah, and um, hopefully a happy new year. <laughs> happy new year to you too, yes. Um, because we are just a few days into the new year. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend as, I don't know, practice or something that we can all do um, at the beginning of the year that can bring more um, meaningfulness, more um, awareness, more joy in, in our, our year? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we did, um, you know, one podcast about rituals and ha as opposed to habits. And then also one podcast about life cycles. Um, so I guess for me, these, um, this specific time um, is, is a way how we can mark kind of an ending of a cycle and then mark a new beginning of a year cycle. Um, and so I actually have begun some years ago, different rituals as an, as an ending marker and then some other things as a beginning. For example, a friend of mine has introduced me to a fire ritual because from the December 25th to January the 5th, there's a very specific time that is called the fire days. So if we want to use the energy field of those times, um, there's, a, there's a process that I was introduced to, which I do like, and I made an adaptation for myself that fits me a little bit better. The one version is beginning from the 25th of December, you write out a wish that you would like to make true in the coming year more, and you write it out on a piece of paper in present tense. And you actually do uh, 13 of those wishes, 12 for each month. And then there's an extra one, which is number 13. And then every day, beginning with the 25th of, September, of, of December, you, you burn one of the pieces of paper into the fire so that the fire kind of takes it over and then you put it into the universe for um, the universe taking care of um, making this wish real. And the way I have designed it for myself is that New Year's um, Eve at midnight or the next day, I take those 13 wishes and they can be personal life wishes and professional life wishes. And I write it out in present tense as if it already has been realized. And then I create a fire and then with the ritual, I throw those pieces of paper into the fire. And um, this year I actually did this on years with my friends. We had a celebration and I kissed every, <laughs> every piece of paper to wish it luck. And then I threw it into the fire and then we watched how it was um, sent off. And that's one of the things because it's, it's, it's pleasurable to, to get engaged in the process and it's a nice ritual for me. Um, another thing that I do is I take a moment where I am looking at my calendar of the year that has just finished. And then I'm kind of looking at what were the three, two, one things. So every month I look and I go three, three things I'm grateful for, two, things that I accomplished that were um, possible for me to do, maybe something I'm a little bit proud of. One thing that um, I was able to learn new in this month. And there, if there's nothing, there's nothing. And then I go to the next month, three grateful to something that I just did that I accomplished and then the last one piece, something new I learned in this, um, in this month. And that's how I bring this year to a close to me. 
And then when I take that, I take a moment to write up in a bubble this new coming year. So 2021, this time I have a little bubble and then I'm writing out um, similar to the mandala of self conversation that we did, the, all the different areas like the mind, the body, senses, um, relationships, then um, context, my spirituality, and nutrition, physical health. And in these areas, I'm writing out the different ways how I would like to do my share in order to nurture those areas of the mandala of self. And then I also look at pro professional area. How do I like to align myself to um, me being expressed in my, um, in the physical world, in my professional life? And that's how I design a little roadmap for my attention towards the future. Did you sense... Uh when you used to do that uh, mandala um, in the past years, did you sense that for this year, um, there are new things showing up? Totally. Um, I think that's an awesome question. This year I noticed that there was a dramatic shift of attention coming from me. I used to plan. So my mandala of self was much more about project realization, about places to go it was very much externally referenced. And it was much more about where do I go? What do I want to do? Who do I want to meet? Who do I want to connect more with? What is the different areas I would like to um, produce? And so it was much more outside. This time I'm noticing myself as I focused on the areas of the mandala of self that there was an inner intention that the way I like to feel, the way I like to experience myself, the way I like to hold a specific state, the way, if you wish, my beingness is unfolding and connecting to those life areas. That was the key driver of me writing out those different ideas. So it was a lot more about a state of being a state of um, less doing, but much more an inner, inner way of connecting to myself and was much more guided by my own inner congruence and alignment of how I would like to express myself in my most deepest beingness. Because I realized from last year's lesson learned, the external can change in a split second. And there's nothing to rely, be rely on and life always happens as I made other plans. So I, I've really dramatically shifted from the outside to my inside and much more connected to what is a state of being that I like to activate inside of myself no matter what and how does it get expressed in those different areas in my mandala, thinking process, emotional process, sensory based relationship, connections, contextual areas, nutrition I take in, body exercise, physical health, and uh, my way of being aligned in my spirituality and how I bring that into action. Mm. Really interesting. And how, how can one cultivate such a, a state of connection? How can you um enrich your uh, daily existence with such a state i have one simple practice that i love to do i will i will give you three different little practices practice number one morning writings so you take a nice book like this one which was given as a gift to me from a friend um, you, open a, you open the first page and then you pick a specific time in the morning and you start writing without thinking. You just allow your bodies to start writing, writing, writing. And you do that for a set period of time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. That's a very nice way of activating a state of being, a state of consciousness. 
And it's kind of an unintentional writing. So it's not a specific theme. You want to cover a territory, but it's just more of writing out as a practice. So those are writing, um, morning writing activities. Another um, exercise I do like to do in the morning is that I take a moment, I sit or I stand, and then I do a physical activity to center myself. So I have a very simple bodily practice, center, open, aware, connecting, holding. So activate what we call a coach state, center, open, aware, connecting, holding. And I do it in a Tai Chi-like movement, a fluid movement that will help me to shift my state or sometimes I imagine I'm a tree that's rooted and growing into the sky. And I imagine myself just being solid like a beautiful tree to activate a centered inner state. And then I'm opening myself to invite resources to come to me. Usually I call upon friends or books or places that are really supportive to me that help me to feel connected to something else. So I'm inviting resources to come. And then I'm taking my inner state as, as if I'm holding a sword to set an intention for the day. What I most wanna to create today is, and as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bo bodily gesture as if I'm, if I'm cutting with a sword into the future uh, with a repetitive movement. And so I will point my attention to say, I like to create today a state of inner peace, for example, or a state of feeling really happy and healthy in my body. And with that, I begin the day. So I, I center myself, I invite for a larger space of resources to be connected with, and then I set my intention for the day, and then I begin. And that's a way for me to cultivating a really good positive state in the beginning. And the third idea is I just have a morning physical practice. Either way you do yoga, or you may like to go for a run, or you may like to go for a walk, have a physical practice that allows you to shift into the highest, best possible connection to your body. And let that be a beginning point to shift into a good state. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for asking. <laughs> As for your intentions for this year, could you share with us some of them or are they a secret? <laughs> um, I don't know if they're secret. You know, my dear friend, Alina, who you may know, um, brought to my attention the idea of 20 lessons learned of 2020, uh, which I loved as an idea. So I actually dedicated my morning writings um, to the tw to different ideas of um, or di different lessons learned out of 2020, and those are actually the markers for me to set my intention towards 21. One of the big learnings I I um, had in 2020 was that um, the outside, as I said before, the outside can shift in any moment. Um, so what I have in charge of and what I have in control is my own inner well-being. So one of my intentions that I set for 21 is have a daily practice, as I mentioned just now, that will um, activate a, a state of inner peace and well-being inside of me. And I know for me that's running and that's yoga practice and that's Tai Chi. So one of the three, I commit myself to do every day. And I pick either way the morning or the evening. Um, so that's one um, definite um, assignment I made to myself. Another one to me that I brought to my, that was brought to my attention as lesson learned was 
how valuable and how fragile um, social relationships are in these times and how essential they are to me. And so I wrote out that I want to nurture my most important core relationships with my best presence possible. So I don't just want to say, oh, let's talk or whatever, but, but really nurture my relationships with the quality of my presence as best as possible in, in my capacity. Um, another intention that I said was that I really want to create uh, an upgraded connection to my connection to spirituality to really feel that I am spirit in a physical form and through my body practice, through my relationship connections, really opening my sense that I am a miracle of life a spirit that has given the gift of a body and how to best make use of that instrument. And so with that, I made a commitment to practice congruency in the sense of Virginia Satya on level three. She did, discover, she did um, describe three different levels of congruency. One is alignment with your feelings, being congruent to your feelings. Two is to be congruent uh, with all the way to your yearnings and, and within your context, but and in relationship to others. But the third one is really um, being congruent all the way through with the beautiful miracle of life that is given to you. And I think that's a piece of art and a practice. And I want to do my best practice to make that happen. And another um, area was that I want my professional self to be really the extension of my spiritual being and to physically express me um, as an educator, me as an author, me as a, um, as a leader in different fields, really as an extension of my best potential and um, and be very seriously um, critical when my ego takes over and wanting to go for approval from others or wanting um, to get to the next job because it's a well-paid one, but, but really staying aligned with my spiritual path rather than the ego seduction that um, gets in place sometimes. And um, I have a strong commitment to that. I really want to be the best possible instrument to teach what it means to be congruent, to become fully alive, and to be um, a human being in this world and stay with the humans. And that's really important to me. What would be some of your hopes for this year? Well, one of the big hopes I have is that we learned the lessons from the last year that the disconnect from our true nature, and that means this nature, but also our contextual nature, meaning nature itself, um, and the exploitation of the natural resources being a huge trouble, and that we begin to learn that we need to nurture our nature again and reconnect to what it means to return back to our sources. Um, I have a strong hope that we are returning to our humanness rather than trying to, to replace with technology what it means to be a human and get enmeshed with human and technology I know that's a big hope, but I do hope that we return back into the Garden of Eden. As I told you before another time, my, I find my name as a mission. <laughs> so I hold myself responsible to, to call people to return back into the Garden. And I feel, I hope that we um, become more embodied, that we take care of nutrition in a healthy way, in a natural way. I hope that we return back to nature 
and be nurtured by that and take care of it, take care of our house. And I do hope that we return back to the natural way of wanting to collaborate and wanting to cooperate. We have a natural tendency when we're not interfered by other learnings to want to cooperate and collaborate and to support each other. And I hope that we can invite those ideas back in. And I do hope that we come back to the knowing that people are social creatures that need to connect emotionally and physically safely because we have two basic needs and that that is i need to be intimately bonded with another being because we are by nature interdependent creatures and i need to have the freedom to uniquely express and show up as myself and be my authentic self and i do hope that i can support to nurture those basic needs that we all have so that we can be humans. That's what I hope. And as we are coming close to the end of, of the conversation for today, what would uh, a word be that would describe for you 2021 as intention as hope as feeling as anything a word or phrase maybe i guess mine is uh, a peaceful unity and differences mm -hmm. that would be the simple phrase i hope for a peaceful unity in honoring differences that is connected to our true nature. Mm. That would be my hope. We'll, we'll learn that this year. If we didn't so far, we, it would be really, really beautiful to do that. Yes. Yeah, I, I see the world as a you know, community space that is um, allowing differences to be nurtured, multidisciplines to be honored, interdisciplinary conversations to take place, and a clear systemic view um, to be the guiding principle for creating something completely new and um, people who grow up to really listen to their inner gifts and bring it to the world freely it's a big it's a big wish i know let's hope for for that wish to be accomplished <laughs> at least uh, in part this year if not in full mm -hmm. um, and hope that we we will be able to do our best in the process yeah, I like that. Thank you. Thank you.